welcome back to the channel everybody this is joe we were just on a trip last week down to tucson in mesa arizona and when i was down there i picked up a couple postcards pretty cool little uh, artwork there by some local artists and uh, if you're on the road with typewriters for instance maybe many of you like to travel with a small typewriter and you might also want to use uh, postcards let's talk about postcards and typewriters shall we stay tuned Postcards are one of those things that have been around for a long, long time. And I think the classic tool for writing a note on a postcard is like a fountain pen. And I certainly uh, don't dis want to discourage you from just using a fountain pen or whatever your favorite pen is with a postcard. Uh, because I love pens as well as typewriters, right? But if you happen to be traveling with like an ultra portable typewriter like this Smith Corona Skywriter, uh, perhaps you might like to try your hand at using a typewriter with a postcard. Sure, if you got a pen and you want to handwrite a, a note, go ahead. My handwriting is atrocious and I really like typing rather than handwriting notes. So there's a few things to consider though if you're going to be using a typewriter with postcards. And the first and most important thing is, can you even roll a postcard through a typewriter? Well, it depends on two things. First of all, it depends on how stiff the postcard is, how well made the cardstock is. The better postcards, the ones that have nicer quality, are unfortunately really stiff and they don't really thread through most typewriters. Of course, ultra portables like this Smith Corona uh, have a small diameter platen. Usually these ultra portables, the platens are about an inch in diameter or so. And also, the feed rollers underneath are usually smaller and the spring tension on the feed rollers is not quite as much as with a bigger machine and all of that conspires to mean that it can be difficult to thread a postcard through a typewriter. Now we might just want to try our hand at this one. This is a blank postcard I haven't used. I don't want to mangle it um, and I want to type on this left side of it so I'm going to try to thread this through the uh, Smith Corona here and I'm gonna have to release the pressure rollers to try to feed it to start it and it's just not going to grab and I can try to force it down onto the past the first set of pressure rollers but it's just not going to feed it's just not going to feed now you could mangle the postcard and try to curl it badly which I've tried to do also with some postcards and all that's going to do is to mean that it's it's going to probably feed partway through there, but it's going to slip. Keep in mind that if you're typing on the back side of the postcard, it's the papery surface, right? But the picture side of the postcard is often printed, well, usually with ink, right? Some kind of mass-produced ink that's slick. It's glossier. It's slicker than the back side. It just doesn't work. So some typewriters, though do a better job of feeding postcards than others. Unfortunately, most of those kinds of typewriters, you don't want to carry them on a trip. They're just big and heavy. I haven't tried this postcard in my Olympia SG3, but the SG, SG3 is one of the largest manual typewriters ever made, maybe the largest. And I don't know if this will feed or not through there, but you don't want to carry an SG3 on vacation, even if, in a, if it's in a car trip, right? So we get back to the problem of, can you really use postcards in a typewriter? Well, instead of a Skywriter, what about a Hermes 3000? This is the uh, Naked typewriter. This is the 1970s version of the Hermes 3000. So uh, I'm going to type on it like that. Let's uh, try, well, let's see. It pulls it in only a fraction of an inch, and I can push it and push it and push it, and that only goes in so far. It's not going to feed through there. I could release the pressure rollers and try to finagle it through there, and it's just not going to go. It's just not going to go. Sorry. So, you know, the mm -hmm. Hermes 3000 is probably the largest typewriter that I'd want to take on a trip, but I do have a bigger typewriter. Let's try the Olympia SG3, shall we? Okay, uh, uh. Olympia SG3. This is probably the biggest typewriter, manual typewriter. All right, 
Let's feed it through there. Mm, try that again. It ain't going. Let me release the pressure rollers and try to force it a little bit more. Release it. Huh? It looks like it took it, but it's not going to advance very well. It's going to slip the line, I can see, because you can't back roll it. So, something this big, technically speaking, you might be able to do it, but uh, this is with the, the thinner cardstock of postcard. This other one that I had mailed my wife, this ain't going through there. There's no way. Well, consider this nice postcard. This is a postcard I found down in Tucson, and the artwork is by a local Tucson artist. Really lovely ink work here. And I was able to mail this postcard uh, to my wife with a typewritten note on it. And the way I was able to do the typewritten note was using Avery adhesive labels. Now, with many of your standard postcards here in the United States, let's let's measure it. It's uh, roughly six inches by four inches, and they typically divide the back of the postcard in half, right? So the part that you want to write on is roughly, this one measures two and seven eighths by four inches, okay? So the challenge is going to be finding labels that are that size. Well, when I went on my trip, I didn't really have the right size labels, but I did have this Avery 5265, and what these are, are eight and a half inch by 11 sheets that are one continuous adhesive label. And you can roll the sheet in your typewriter, and you can type a section that is however big you want to be. So what I did is I brought this with me, with my typewriter, this is the actual sheet that I used. And I used a piece out of here that was about three and seven eighths by four and a quarter, roughly. And uh, so on my letter here, I actually, the label part that I used went a little bit more than halfway over. So I rolled the whole piece of paper in to the typewriter. I set my margins on the machine so that it would uh, be the uh, appropriate width, which would be roughly three inches. And then I, I wrote about just a little, a little bit less than four inches in, in height. And I brought along with me not only uh, my typing accessories, I usually bring them in a little portfolio pouch like this. I have typing paper, correction tape, and all that. I brought the, the full page label pack here with me. I also brought a pair of scissors, right? There's probably smaller scissors that you can use that aren't quite as ungainly. Keep in mind, I'm on a car trip. I can travel with scissors on a car trip. If you're flying, that's a total different story. And maybe there are TSA approved scissors so you can't run and hurt yourself on an airplane. Or not. I don't know. I haven't researched that. But this is really for car trips is what I'm talking about. Uh, so I brought a pair of scissors so I could cut these labels out. And I also had some old forever stamps, U.S. postage first class forever stamps. Now keep in mind, uh, postcards uh, actually don't take quite as much postage as a first class letter, but I happen to have forever stamps. So I brought a little sheet of forever stamps so I could mail some postcards. And the nice thing is I can buy really heavy duty postcards, really thick, like this one, for instance, that I actually mailed is a thicker card stock weight than this one. And there's no way this one's rolling into any kind of a typewriter. But rolling in the Avery adhesive sheet and typing on a certain section of it and then cutting that out with your scissors and plastering it onto the back of your postcard, get your uh, stamp on it, mail it at the hotel or wherever, you're good to go, right? Fantastic. Well. Then this morning, I got on the web and I started looking around for maybe, does Avery make a label already the size of what we need for a standard postcard? And it turns out that Avery makes a item number 6874, Avery 6874. And these come in sheets of six labels to a sheet. Each label is three inches wide by three and three quarter inches. 
So if you start looking now at the standard postcard, three inches wide puts me just barely over the center mark edge of the postcard width-wise, and three and three quarters is perfect. It gives me about an eighth of an inch border on the top and bottom. Perfect size for typing uh, notes on a postcard. And so my local staples did not have these in stock, but I've ordered a pack of these via Amazon. They're gonna be in after this video posts, it'll be in probably Wednesday. So probably next week I'll do a little update video on these Avery model number 6874 labels. I think these are gonna work for postcards so you don't need to bring scissors with you in case you're flying anywhere where they worry about scissors. Okay, typewritten notes on postcards. Joe's little trick is using adhesive labels. Is it cheating? Is only the purest method of using postcards to type directly on the card. Maybe if you want to bring an Olympia SG-1 or 3 or something, or one of those humongous big upright typewriters. But if you're a practical person, you're going to be, if you're taking a typewriter at all, it's going to be probably an ultra portable if you're traveling. And if you happen to have the ultra portable, yeah, some labels, right? Stamps. Go buy your nice postcards, plaster the typewritten note on the back of the postcard. You're good to go. All right, this is Joe. Any questions, drop them down below. Until next time, stay creative and have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye.